here I am at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington DC with Abraham Lincoln himself trapped in carbonite. If only those carbonited lips could talk, he could tell us some of the legends that surround old Honest Abe's life. It's getting cold out here. Let's go to narration now. Abraham Lincoln was born on the 12th of February, 1809. Though this in itself isn't a mystery, do any of us really know where life comes from? In Abe's case, it came from Thomas Lincoln and his wife, Nancy Hanks Lincoln, who died under mysterious poisoning when Abraham was nine. I'm not blaming him. The cloud of death, however, would follow Abraham Lincoln through his life until he was shot by John Wilkes Booth. But before John Wilkes shot the president, his brother, Edwin Booth, was the most famous member of the Booth family, being a rather good actor. And he once saved the life of President Lincoln's son, Robert Todd Lincoln, in extraordinary irony. In 1864, a year before his evil brother would assassinate Lincoln, his son Robert fell onto train tracks and was rescued from locomotive death by the arms of Edwin Booth, who pulled the president's son back onto the platform. Such coincidences became commonplace for the president's son. Because, by a fluke of chance, Abraham Lincoln's son Robert was at the scene when three presidents fell victim to assassins. He was there on the 15th of April, 1865, when his father lost his struggle for survival. But later, on the 2nd of July, 1881, Robert Lincoln was with President James A. Garfield at Washington's Baltimore and Potomac Railway Station when Garfield was gunned down. On the 6th of September, 1901, President William McKinley was attending the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo when a gunman fatally wounded him. Robert Lincoln was on a train arriving in Buffalo when the shooting occurred. He hurried to comfort the President, who died eight days later. It's a wonder Robert Todd Lincoln never fell under suspicion for all the Presidents dying around him. More than a century after Abraham Lincoln's death, there became more synchronicity, more coincidences that seemed to link him to assassinated President John F. Kennedy. Some of these coincidences are as follows. Lincoln was elected to Congress in 1846, Kennedy in 1946. Lincoln was elected President in 1860, Kennedy in 1960. Both presidents were shot in the head from behind on a Friday with their wives at their side. The car in which Kennedy died was a Ford Lincoln. Lincoln was shot in Ford's theater. John Wilkes Booth, who killed Lincoln, was born in 1839. Lee Harvey Oswald, who killed Kennedy, was born in 1939. Both assassins were known by their three names. Booth ran from the theatre and was caught in a warehouse. Oswald ran from a warehouse and was caught in a theatre. Both assassins were killed before they could be tried. Both successors had the surname Johnson. Lincoln's successor, Andrew Johnson, was born in 1808. Kennedy's successor, Lyndon B. Johnson, was born in 1908. Both presidents were warned of danger. Lincoln's secretary, who was named Kennedy, begged him not to go to the theatre. Kennedy's secretary, who was named Lincoln, implored him to stay away from Dallas. Shortly before Lincoln died, he was in Monroe, Maryland. Shortly before Kennedy was shot, he was in Marilyn Monroe. Coincidence? Who knows? But the story of strange happenings surrounding Honest Abe, the great emancipator, doesn't stop there, even at his death. 
during the presidency of George Bush, First Lady Laura Bush admitted that she had seen Abraham Lincoln's ghost in the White House. She said that the assassinated president's apparition had appeared to her while she was writing Christmas card messages. I sent someone peering over my shoulder. I looked up, very alarmed, and there was the unmistakable and seemingly solid figure of Lincoln standing only inches away, she said. Mrs. Bush was not the first prominent person to report an encounter with the long dead president. The heroic World War II leader, Winston Churchill, saw the spectre while he was staying in the VIP room, Lincoln's old bedchamber. Churchill wrote, he was standing in the doorway, his face full of sadness. In 1908, President Teddy Roosevelt told a meeting of editors, yes, I've spotted Lincoln in the White House's rooms and halls. He is shambling and homely with a sad, strong, deeply furrowed face. During Franklin D. Roosevelt's presidency, a White House staff member, Mary Eben, reported that she had glimpsed Lincoln for several seconds. I walked into a second floor bedroom and there he was, sitting on a bed in an old fashioned black coat, pulling on a pair of boots, she said. I watched, hardly able to breathe, as he faded gradually from sight. So Lincoln's still with us, as is his family. There is a bloke named Timothy Lincoln Beckwith, who is alive today, walking among us, and he could be the great-great-grandson of Abraham Lincoln. He was born on the 14th of October, 1968, to Anne Marie Beckwith, who was married to Robert Todd Lincoln Beckwith. Just before the birth, however, Robert urged his wife to list the father as unknown, and he gave her $7,000. But she listed Robert as the father anyway, despite his father apparently being sterile. Although his ancestry is disputed, Timothy Lincoln Beckwith currently lives in West Palm Beach, Florida, where he is a lawyer, just like his great-great-grandfather was. Coincidence? Who am I to say? So there you have it, the mysteries and coincidences of Abraham Lincoln's life prior to being carbonated. There is one great mystery that remains, however. Was Abraham Lincoln really Jack the Ripper? See the top hat? Ripperologist, the late Chris Scott, seems to think so in his book, Was Abraham Lincoln Jack the Ripper? Fascinating. It takes a fascinating fella to become the president, something that you and I will probably never be. Subscribe.